So we've covered everything in the physical realm, let's talk about magic. There are three main things to talk about when it comes to magic. Spell hit, spell power, and resistance. Let's start with spell hit, which is much, much simpler in comparison to the physical hit table. So spell hit is much simpler than physical hit. There are essentially three attack results, hit, miss, or resist. A hit means your spell hits the target. After you roll a hit, another roll happens to see if you crit. So if you have, say, a hit chance of 90% and a spell crit chance of 10%, you actually only have a crit chance of 9%. A miss is also simple, your spell just doesn't hit and nothing happens to the target. First off, you will always have a 1% chance to miss your spells and that cannot be negated. Secondly, if the target and the caster are of equal level, the chance to miss is 4%, so this means your PvP hit cap is 3%, putting your hit up to 99% because again, there's always a 1% chance to miss. If the target is 1 level higher than the caster, the miss chance is 5%. 2 levels higher? 6%. 3 levels higher? Well, we know what that means, that's raid boss territory. So the caster has a 17% chance to miss, and for every level beyond, that increases the miss chance by 11%. In PvP, a caster targeting a player that's 3 levels higher has a 13% chance to miss, and every level beyond that increases the miss chance by 7%. That's literally the entire hit and miss system for spells. When you miss a spell in-game, it won't say miss, it will say resist, but in yellow text. A real resist occurs when you see the word resist, but in white text. A resist happens differently depending on if the spell is either binary or non-binary. Binary means the spell can either only be fully resisted or not resisted at all. Binary spells are usually non-damaging spells that cause some form of CC effect like Fear or Polymorph, but also include spells like Frostbolt or Death Coil. That said, any CC effects that create a debuff with a duration, things like Snares, Slows, Fears, or even hard CC Polymorph type abilities, have a chance to be removed before the full duration. Every server tick, the mob performs a resistance check for that debuff, and if it wins, the CC effect drops off. So non-binary spells are damaging spells and have multiple resist outcomes. They can have 100% of the damage resisted, 75% of the damage resisted, 50% resisted, 25% resisted, or not resisted at all. And this outcome is based on the resistance score of the target. Resistance doesn't apply to magic in general, but rather to separate schools of magic. Arcane, Fire, Nature, Frost, and Shadow. So when you get resistance, you almost always get resistance in one specific school. Against binary spells, resistance increases your chance to fully resist a spell. Against non-binary spells, resistance increases chances of all levels of partial resist by different amounts. Honestly, there's some complicated math behind this I don't want to pin down, and thankfully, there's some nice graphs that you can see here. Just like with your skill levels, your max resistance is your level times 5, meaning max resistance at level 60 is 300. And just like armor, the max overall damage reduction you can get is 75%. So as you can see by the damage absorption graph, every extra point of resistance adds even more damage absorbed than the last. Most of the time, the only players that really need to worry about getting resistance are tanks in fights like Ragnaros or Twin Imps. If you're trying to resistance cap yourself against a raid boss as a tank, you're going to want a total of 315 resistance. Like I said, resistance functions quite similarly to skill levels. So since the raid boss is 3 levels above you, its attack tables are able to negate 15 of your resistance score. Also realize you need at most 255 resistance from gear because your paladin or shaman will buff you for 60. It is important to note that any effects, buffs, or talents that reduce the resistances of the mob you are casting a spell at, the mob needs some resistance in that spell school in order for that effect to be useful. That blue enemy resistance score table mostly encapsulates the importance of this entire section. Spell power increases the damage or healing that your magic spells do. The amount increase you get is not necessarily a 1 to 1 ratio, but rather depends on 5 qualifiers. The base cast time of the spell, AoE or single target, the duration parameters of any overtime effects, lifesteal type effects, and if the spell has quote unquote additional non-damage based effects, like slows for example. The percentage benefit you get from spell power is called your spell power coefficient. You multiply your character's added spell power by the spell power coefficient for a spell to figure out how much benefit that spell gets. And the reason the coefficient changes so much depending on these qualifiers is simply for balancing among the class itself. This should make sense the more I explain exactly how you find each of your coefficients. The very first thing you want to do to find the spell power coefficient for your spell is take the based cast time of the spell, then divide by 3.5. We use 3.5 because that's the longest 
and or most standard cast time for almost all single target spells. Any spell that goes over 3.5 seconds gets treated as a 3.5 second cast for these purposes, and any spell with a cast time less than 1.5 seconds gets treated as a 1.5 second cast. This includes instant cast spells. The number you get from this formula is your spell power coefficient for that spell. Again, we multiply that by our total spell power, and that's how much extra damage you'll get to that spell. This means the highest benefit you can get here is 100%, and the lowest is 42.86%. Now this coefficient you have is applied before any effects that change the spell's casting duration. This way, even if you take a talent that says decrease cast time by 0.5 seconds, you're not going to be doing less DPS, in fact, you're doing more. To calculate the coefficient for AoE spells, do the same thing as before, but divide by 3. We divide by 3 because AoE spells, in the scheme of MMOs and RPGs and such, are conventionally believed to be best used when there are 3 or more mobs. The highest benefit you can get in this scenario is 33%, and the lowest is, as we see here, 14.3%. To calculate the coefficient for spells that have a damage over time component, we take the duration of the spell's effect divided by 15, and that's your spell power coefficient for the entirety of the spell. We use 15 in similar logic to single target casted spells, the longest and most standard duration of these kinds of spells to have is about 15 seconds. And in that same vein, any spell with a duration over 15 seconds is treated as if it had 15 seconds. Notice that the spell power coefficient increases these damage or heal over time effect spells by the total damage or healing over time, not per tick. We see that here with Shadow Word Pain doing 30 damage over 18 seconds. So if I had 10 spell power, it would now do 40 damage over 18 seconds. To find out how much increase you get per tick, divide the duration of the spell's effect by 3 almost every time. Because overtime effects tick every 3 seconds in almost all conditions. Anytime that this is not the case, you should be able to read the tooltip for how often it ticks, or watch the animation to find out for yourself. Also, just like with single target casted spells, the spell power coefficient applies before any duration increase or decrease. This way, talents that increase the duration of the spell's effect don't make you lose DPS. They would do the same damage per tick, they would just last a little bit longer. The last two qualifiers are much simpler. If your spell has an effect that causes healing based on the amount of damage done by the spell, we would call this a sort of lifesteal effect. Calculate the coefficient as normal, and then divide it by two, that's your new coefficient. Lastly, spells that have additional non-damage based effect have their final spell coefficient reduced by 5%. By additional non-damage based effects, I mean things like Frostbolt because it slows, Earthshock because it silences, and Insect Swarm because it decreases chance to hit. Let's use these spells to practice our math here. Earthshock has two qualifiers. It's an instant cast spell, and it has a CC type effect that interrupts and silences. Since it's an instant, we do 1.5 over 3.5 to get 0.428. Next, due to the CC effect, we multiply that by 0.95, resulting in 0.407 spell power coefficient. That's it. So what about Insect Swarm? That's a damage over time spell with a CC type effect. It has a duration of 12 seconds, so we'll say 12 over 15, which is 0.8, and we multiply that to 0.95 due to its hit chance decrease effect, resulting in 0.76 spell power coefficient for the damage of the whole spell. So how much is that per tick? Well, my source says that Insect Swarm actually ticks every 2 seconds, so we'll say 12 seconds divided by 2 seconds equals 6 ticks, and 0.76 spell power coefficient divided over 6 ticks equals 0.127 spell power coefficient per tick. <laughs> Lastly, there's one more type of spell, the hybrid spell. Think of spells like Immolation or Regrowth. I'm going to put the formula here on screen so that if you want to figure it out, you may, but the idea is that it splits the spell power coefficient between the immediate effect and the overtime effect. Now, I found a Reddit post a while back where user Robert Vest did all the math for every spell, and as someone who abhors math, I'd rather just reference this list most of the time, but at least for now, you know where the numbers come from. So that's the magic system, and that wraps up this miniseries. Uh, this was really interesting to make. I definitely put more research and effort and care into this project than any other project or work I've ever done, even in college. So hopefully y'all found this useful and can come back to it when you need to. And I don't usually say this often because I feel kind of stupid saying it, and this is quite obvious to me, so I'm only going to say it here, but if you like this series and you want to see more of this kind of stuff, be sure to like the video and subscribe. 
But genuinely, most importantly, if you have questions, concerns, or hell, even possible corrections to anything I've said here, absolutely please leave a comment. My favorite part of making these videos is being able to interact with all of you lovely people. And so as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.